Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about coordinate descent of the eye, which is the basic algorithm of variational inference. So the algorithm assumes that we are using the mean field approximation, meaning that the joint distribution of our surrogate distribution factorizes into a product of the individual distribution pair variable, pair zj. And what we do, we iterate over the variables j, and we set the qj of each variable to be proportional to this expression over here. It's proportional to the expectation with regards to all the other variables except zj, uh, meaning the expectation with regards not as just the variables, but all the other uh, distribution of those variables, of the qj's, of the log probability of zj given all the other variables and our data x. So notice that this distribution, this optimal distribution that we are setting, might have circular dependency with regards to its parameters. So for example, qj zj, the optimal qj zj, depends in this expression over the expected value of i, which is not j, of zi. And this thing over here, it might somehow affect the, this distribution. It might be related to the mean of this distribution or the variance of this distribution. So it might be somehow related to it and somehow related to its parameters. So we will get that the parameters of this distribution have dependencies over the quantities of other distribution of the other qj and zj. So the qj zj might be dependent on values of qi zi. So because of this circular dependency in the parameters, we start off with some random values of these parameters. Yeah, so these distribution will have some parameters and we start with some random values of them. And then using that, we can calculate the expected values of those distributions and then keep updating the parameter values of each distribution. And we do it again and again in an iterative method. Uh, and we do this until the elbow converges or until the parameters don't change, basically. OK, so I know this is quite abstract. And in this video, I will show another. First, I will show why this is true, why this is the optimal solution. And also, I will give a two-dimension ex example, an easy example to derive the Kavi algorithm in a general case where I don't have uh, I don't specify the distributions in any way. And in the next two videos, I'm going to give two uh, easy examples where I do specify distribution and where we use the Kavi algorithm to uh, find the solutions, uh, to find the most, the closest surrogate of the posterior that we are looking for. Okay, but first thing first, I want to first show that this thing is also proportional to uh, the joint, okay? Not to, the conditional here is also proportional to the joint. And the reason is that we are fixing all the other, uh, not Z, but the Q of Z, yeah? So I, I, I will show it. So if we take the, this conditional, then the conditional is just uh, the joint divided by what we are conditioning on, right? And then using rules of logarithms, it factors into this difference. And now if we take the e to the power of the expectation of this with regards to all variables except j, then we will get this expression over here. And uh, this will also factor. Uh, the expected value also uh, is linear. So it goes into these different sums. And now notice, this is the expected values with regard to all variables except j of, well, all the variables except the j, all the z's that we care about except j and x, our data, which is known, okay? So this is the expected value with regards to the cubes, yeah? So this thing will be a constant, yeah? I mean, if we could derive it, it would be a constant. We will have to calculate the expected value of all the different z's here that we do not know, but it's okay. We, we take the expected values and then it becomes a constant. So this whole expression becomes proportional to this expression over here, because we're basically just multiplying this part with a constant, which is 
e to the power of this, right? So we proved this little claim. So it doesn't matter if you see sometimes that it's written like this or sometimes it's written like this, it doesn't matter, they are the same. Okay, so now to the que big question, which is why is this the optimal solution? Why is Kavi works? So what do we want to do in Kavi is that in each iteration, we want to maximize the elbow, but we want to do it over one specific QI function. So remember we are breaking down the joint Q to individual uh, QJ or QI, and we want that to, we have like different knobs and each time we just control one knob, we just change that knob, we just change QI. Okay, so what is the elbow if we only want to control for QJ? We want to maximize the elbow, but we only maximize it with regard to QJ. So the elbow is this thing over here, right? It's this, but Q we said is factorizing into this. And now uh, we can use uh, what I guess I can call iterated expectation or conditional expectation and derive that it's this quantity over here. Okay, why is that? Well, what is the expected value? So it's just an integral. And let's say we only have 2z. Two two yeah, let's say we have z1 and z2. So it's the integral of um, over z1 and then the integral over z2 of this quantity log p z1 z2 and x and then the q of z1 times the q of z2 dz1 dz2 right this is what we are calculating this is equal to this expression over here right now we can just rearrange the terms and it's just well, the integral over z1, qz1, times the integral over z2 of qz2, times the log of both uh, of p, z1, z2, and x, dz2, dz1, right? And this thing over here is exactly this thing over here. And if we take then the integral over uh, z1 and multiply this by qz1, we just get this thing over here. So I hope it's clear enough. And here, well, we break this down this way. So the log of a product is equal to the sum of logs. Uh, we use the same logic as we did here. And we here we take the expectation with regards to everything that is not J. So the only thing that doesn't have expectation uh, is the, the log QJ. And the rest will have the expectation. This will be some constants that we right now we don't care about, right? Because right now we only control for QJ, we don't control for the rest. So this thing right now is a constant for us. If we optimize this with QJ, this doesn't affect it. Okay, so basically we just want to maximize this term, okay? And if I take a minus over this, we get that it's this thing and if here, I take this expression and I take the log of the exponent of it, then we get uh, this thing over here because the log and exponent cancel. And then this is equal, if you notice, the minus of the KL divergence, right? It's here, it's we are maximize, we, we are taking the expectation with regards to QJ, ZJ of log QJ, ZJ uh, divided by uh, this thing over here. Now, this thing over here is proportional to the optimal QJZJ, right? Remember, this is what we said here. It means this is uh, the term that we have below, and it's proportional to the QJZJ. So we could say that uh, we are, this whole thing is equal to the minus of the KL between QJ that we are now turning the knob to, we are trying to optimize for, to this ex uh, expression over here, which I don't know, we can call it this thing, plus some constant, right? Because there is some normalizing constant that uh, doesn't appear in this uh, term. So if we want to maximize the minus KL, it's the same as minimizing the KL. And so what would be the best thing to minimize the KL? Well, if we just put that the value is this, we get that the KL is zero. So the way that we will minimize the KL is just by setting QJ to be uh, the this expression, this term over here, but of course it's only proportional to because there is some constant that we uh, didn't account for, 
Okay, so this is why uh, this is indeed the optimal solution if we are using mean field approximation. Okay, so this is kind of theoretical. Let's put it down a bit more concrete and give a 2D example. So suppose uh, we are now having uh, two variables of z, z1 and z2, and using the mean field approximation, the q factorizes into q1 and q2, and so we are trying to maximize the elbow, which is this expression over here. Again, we can set it as an L, we could call it an L. And this is what it is in practice, it's uh, this term times q1 times q2, again, because we factor the, the q into q1 and q2. Okay, now we can use uh, properties of logarithms to expand this thing into this. Yeah, now we, because these are all good functions, uh, we can uh, expand the integrals uh, into three integrals that correspond to these three terms here. And now we can, the first integral leave the same, the second and third integral rearrange such that we have the integral of uh, terms that only relate to z1 and integrals of terms that only relate to z2. And here we get that an integral over q2 z2, which is, since q2 is a valid distribution, uh, this thing should be equal to one, so it cancels. And likewise, for the third integral, we get this thing, which cancels. So we are left with these three integrals. And now we can regroup them in two different ways. One way to regroup them is first take q1, z1 out uh, from whatever we can. And we will get that here we are left with the log joint times q2, z2. And here we are left with the log q1. Okay, and so this thing over here, this thing will stay the same. It doesn't depend on q1. Okay, but we can also do the same if, if we take out q2 and then we will get this whole uh, expression over here. Yeah. So this is the elbow, and now we want to maximize this once with regards to Q1 and once with regards to Q2. And remember, Q1 and Q2 are distributions, they are function. We are need to basically optimize with regard to a function. So we are using what is called functional derivative, which is a, a, a term that is coming from the field of calculus of variation, which again puts the V in VI. And uh, there is a formula for differentiating this with regards to a function, and it's the Euler-Lagrange equation. I won't go into uh, it in this video. I'm also not an expert. You should definitely check out other sources regarding this. But it turns out that uh, in our case, it's uh, differentiating with regard to Q1. It's kind of like differentiating with regards to a variable. You can consider this a variable and then use the product rule. So first, we differentiating with regards to this, and then we are left with all the other terms, which is these two, and this is what gives us this. And then we differentiate, we leave Q1 as the same, and we differentiate it here with regards to Q1, and so log Q1 is just one, the differentiation of this is just one over Q1, and so we have Q1 uh, times one over Q1, and this is, gives us the one, okay? And the same thing if we have done for the second term, second expression over here with regards to Q2. Now notice that this thing over here is just equal to the expectation of Z2 uh, that, that distributes Q2 of the log joint. And so uh, if we move terms here, we get that Q1 is equal to e to the power of this minus one, which is proportional to e to the power of this. And notice that this is exactly what the formula said, right? Q of one is proportional to e uh, to the power of the expected value of all the other Qs, in, which are not one. In this case, we only have Q2 and Z2 uh, of the log joint. And the same is true for the Q2, Z2. Okay, so in the next two videos, I will show a concrete example of this. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.